Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Son of Scorgasm. This is from Charlie's Games who previously did the game Scorgasm and this game was supposed to come out years ago. I'm not even joking, this game was announced back in like 2012 and hasn't come out until now. Admittedly he, he ported this game in like the last couple of months and he did a lot of work and he got it out pretty quick but still it's a bit weird to have a game come out like five years after it was announced or something like that. It was pretty silly but anyway, game's here now so let's go and talk about it. Not that much to see in the menus, you got trophies, I have a fair few of them. You also have leaderboards. And as you can see, I am current number three on the high scoreboard. Okay, that's pretty nice. And there are also individual leaderboards for all of the other levels. There is a difficulty setting. We won't change that just yet. I'll actually go through and explain the game and what I like about it first. Because I really do need to... I'm going to be playing the easy levels, for the most part anyway. Because I... Trust me, this game is actually a lot harder than it looks, so I'm going to need to be able to process what I'm doing and what I'm saying at the same time. So, you can play score attack on these levels, but you can also start a new game. And the general idea is that it's a lot like an arcade game where you can pick what route you go down and what boss you fight at the end or what just what level you do at the end. Like, think of it like Darius vs. Arcade mode and you'll have the general idea. So, we'll just start the first level right away. So here we are, it's Son of Scorgasm, and there's not that much to understand, really. You can move with the left stick and shoot with the right stick. However, this does not... Unbelievable, I'm dead already. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus, okay. Let's try that again. Move with the left, shoot with the right. Both your shoulder buttons will set off a close range bomb. That is the only way you can earn multiplier. Now, you might be thinking of a game like Geometry Wars, which is definitely what I was thinking of. And you might think, oh, well, why does it make it so that your bombs are how you get your score multiplier? You also do have a three-way shot, which you learn pretty quickly in most levels just by shooting things. But yeah. Your bomb is the way you earn multiplier, and your multiplier actually starts out at zero. So if you don't use your bombs throughout the game, you will get absolutely no score whatsoever. So as you can see, I got 269. I also got the high score medal, which is actually pretty cool. I'm going to head up to the easy level. The gates there pick between the easy and the hard levels. And it just continues on like this. Now, the way the bombs work is interesting. You earn them back relatively slowly, just as a natural pace, but you do not want to use that. Instead, you want to be shooting the enemies. Because when you shoot the enemies, you will earn your bombs back way faster. So, you want to be using your bombs constantly, because they're the only way you can earn your multiplier. But you don't have an infinite amount of them, as you can see. The little ring around you drains the more bombs you use. So, you have to be constantly balancing your use of bombs with your use of your shoot. Shooting. Your gun, I should say. Because balancing the two is how you keep your bombs stocked up. I'm going to go down the hard gate because I remember the level down the easy game. It's a pain in the ass. So you have to keep the two balanced, is what I'm trying to say. Because that's the only way you're going to earn a decent amount of points. And this is actually a really clever idea. And the majority of the levels, in fact I can't think of a level that doesn't actually have it well balanced. The entire game seems to be entirely balanced around this mechanic. It's fantastic, really. Actually, I'm kind of surprised at just how well it's done for itself. Because that, the whole gameplay balance of shooting as many dudes as you can while also bombing as many dudes as you can. Meanwhile, trying to keep your stock of bombs up. While not trying to use them too fast, because as you can see, I'm starting to run out of them, and I died, because of course I did. Trying to keep your stack of bombs up so that you're not going to run out at a crucial moment, because enemies will swarm you in every single direction in this game. Just believe that, straight off. They, they, they will come from every direction, and enemy bullets will come from every direction as well, and the only way you can take them out is by bombing them. So, in order to keep carving yourself a path, you need to have a lot of bombs, but to have a lot of bombs, you need to shoot a lot of people. But to shoot a lot of people, 
you will need to get, you will need to use your bombs to both clear the way for you and to get a high score. Obviously, you can play the game just by shooting, but you're not going to get a high score through that, and chances are you're going to die anyway, because again, enemies can attack you from any direction that they damn well please. So you want to be... If you want to actually, like, be trying for the score medals, which are just, like, little medals you get for getting above certain scores, you definitely want to be balancing your... Balancing the usage of your bombs and your guns as much as you possibly can. The game itself even suggests this right away, because if you play its tutorial level under the How to Play section in the menu, it will tell you right away the good usage of your bombs and your guns at the same time will let you continuously use your bombs. So the game is fully aware that its balancing is like this, and it... It is honestly quite glorious. I am a really big fan of this mechanic, and it is a... It's, on, it's honestly just a lot of fun trying to do the balancing act. I really do enjoy the whole balancing act I've got going on here, because it is a surprisingly entertaining way to do the game. It keeps things interesting, because if you want to actually go for the high score, you have to be constantly going for the multiplier, but you've also got the idea that you don't want to be using your bombs very much once you get to a certain multiplier, because if you do, you won't be using your guns, and you don't earn any points for blowing enemies up. So you have to find your good multiplier. You have to find a good multiplier amount and stick to it. Because if you if you don't, you're not going to earn very many points. But if you do, if if you but if you do, you can also just choose to try and you know succeed at the level. But that's no fun. You got to try and get as many points as possible. Combine this with a couple of other things that the game does, like for example, this level here is a very obvious example of... Well, I don't want to call it a gimmick level, because gimmick levels imply that it's not an interesting way of handling the game, and there are a bunch of gimmick levels in this game, with a bunch of different kinds of enemies, there's lots of different kinds of enemies in this game, and they're all very dangerous. Yep, I looked away just at the wrong time there, that was my fault entirely. Yeah, I don't want to call it a gimmick level, but I do think it's a gimmick. It's just not a bad gimmick. It's an enjoyable gimmick, and there are a lot of levels like this. There are levels where the only way you're attacked is via bombs to push you back, but the entire outside of the ring is lava. There, there's a level where it's literally nothing but bombs that throw out tons of bullets, and you need to be very conservative with your usage of your bombs in order to keep yourself alive in that regard. There's a, there's a bunch of different boss levels that all have their own neat little gimmicks to them as well. Like, one of them will reflect your bullets from the front, one of them will constantly throw missiles at you. Just things like that are interesting. They are a good way of designing the game. I haven't found a level that I disagree with yet. I have found myself very... Oh, this is the laser lasso level. This level is interesting, because... I died immediately. That, well, that is one reason why the level is interesting, because that means it's actually difficult enough to actually give a shit about. But yeah, laser lasso. So you've got these... So you've got these bullets that are coming in, that are constantly filling the middle of the screen, plus you've got all these dudes on the outside. And you need to... For the fuck's sake... So you've got these dudes coming around from the outside, the laser lasso coming on the inside, and you have to figure out how the hell do I get through this with enough bombs to keep me alive while still getting a good multiplier for my guns and still managing to destroy enough enemies with my guns and I'm seriously doing terribly right now. The game also has another unique mechanic, and that's the... That's the mid-level... What's a, what's a good word for it? The game alerts you that you've got bad shit coming, which is nice. And then at the midpoint of every single level, including the bosses... Fuck's sake. Yeah, it says get ready. Uh, intensifications, I guess? I, I Intensity ups? I'm not even going to claim to have a good word. I wandered right into that. Let's go back to the map and pick a level that I might do a little bit better on sweep. Let's do that. 
This level's a cool idea for a level, and I quite like it. But yeah, every level has a unique intensification at the midpoint, which adds a new element of danger to it. And that just makes every level twice as interesting, because you never know what you're going to get the second time around. Obviously, it's going to be somewhat related to whatever it is you are trying to do, right? So, all these enemies here are coming from, well, more or less one side of the suite. I do actually remember what the mid-level gimmick is for this one. Here come the bullets from the other direction. So, you've got dudes swarming from one direction and bullets swarming from the other Tons of opportunities for bombings for multipliers. Tons of dudes to shoot at. And you just have to find a way to balance it all. And that's, that, that is this entire game in a nutshell. A twin stick shooter balancing act. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's a really clever idea. And it works great. I haven't played a level that I disagree with yet. I've played with levels that are really hard. And have absolutely wiped the floor with me. But, I have not found a level that's completely unfair, because the game does alert you. Oh, this is my- yeah, this is the boss fight, actually. So yeah, the game, unfortunately, is not that long. We'll get into that. But yeah, I think it's absolutely fantastic. The way he's balanced all the mechanics, the way... Dicks. The way he's balanced all the mechanics, the way he's, uh made it so that it's a real balancing act of managing your bombs, managing your bullets, and just trying to get that good balance of trying to get as many things as possible. Just all of this makes for a really interesting and really engaging twin stick shooter. Charlie's Games did an absolutely fantastic job here. I am a really big fan of what's going on here, and I... I find it really fun to play just because of all of this. Oh god, I'm out of bombs. No, I got him. It's alright, I got him. Oh, exactly 4.7 million points. Exactly 4.7 million. That's actually pretty neat. Yeah, there's the king. <laughs> so apparently that boss was holding on to a chocolate digestive. That's the... That's the end of the route there. You can jump to any individual level and play from there. So if you're having a little bit of trouble getting to a specific level, well, you can do that. There are a couple of other things as well. I'll just hop on to another level just to keep playing instead of just waiting around in the menus. A couple of other things. Uh, the visual presentation is fine for the most part. There is some little issues. Oh, I pressed that just too late. There... There are a couple of issues with the game's graphics. Sometimes it's hard to see when dudes are coming. Like, you can see on the very edge of the circle there that the snakes are about to spawn in. Everything does get that spawn warning, even the bullets. So, it's not a massive deal, but still, it can be just kind of hard to see in the heat of the moment. But it's there, and it's fair for the most part. Every level is the same, more or less, right? Like, it's gonna spawn in the same set of- oh dear. Great, uh, <laughs> that was the kit fucking up. Thank you, kit. Let's give that another shot, shall we? But yeah, the, um, the levels all spawn in the same stuff all the time, so you're not- it's not random, and you can get used to a particular kind of level. That's absolutely fine. So that, that's entirely fair, more or less. And there goes there goes the kid again. I'm thinking it's something to do with the way the colors are currently set out in this level, which is unfortunate. Because this is actually a pretty neat level, snakes. I'll just stay down here, it seems to be helping. But yeah, the um, rest of the visual presentation is nice and clean. It means that you're not getting distracted by anything particularly, particularly over the top graphic, graphics wise. And its performance is... Well, it's not rock solid. There have been a couple of... There it goes again. I'm gonna go play another level because the kit is having a massively bad time trying to keep up with this. It's annoying, honestly. Alright, we'll try Force. It's 
So yeah, this is interesting. This is the level I told you about where the bombs just kick you back. And I actually got kicked into an enemy, not into the wall, which was kind of annoying, but yes. But yeah, as I was... For fuck's sake. As I was saying, the performance of the game is not 100% rock solid. On levels with tons of enemies and bullets, the game will start to slow down, but it does go into more or less slow motion more than anything else, right? So, you still maintain complete control over the actual game. Jesus Christ. You still main complete, maintain complete control over the game. It's just... It's slower. It runs slower than normal. It's um, it's like a cave bullet hell shooter where they actively slow the game down and give you a little bit of help. And that's nice. I, I, I much prefer that over dropping frames and not recognizing inputs. So, there you go, right? The soundtrack, honestly, is probably the weakest part of it. Just because I really don't have that much to say about it. I honestly just ignore it after a while. I mainly pay attention to the sound effect design, which is a really good set of sound effects, because you can tell... You can tell when the warning is coming, you can tell when you've got a new bomb in stock, you can tell when you're about to run out of bombs, and you can hear all this without any sort of issues whatsoever. So it's, it's a really well done soundscape and it helps you actually play the game. The only downside is that I think the bomb sound might be a little bit too loud. Damn it. I think the bomb might be a little bit too loud in comparison to all the other sound effects. But other than that, it's still a really well designed soundscape and I much prefer it. I, 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 I don't much prefer it, but I really do like it. Is there anything else I have to say about it? Uh, well, it's a little bit short. I mean, you have seen... You have seen the... Like, a full-on set of, like, seven levels. Sure, the game is, like, a fair bit harder than, like, say, Geometry Wars. And if you want to actually go for your score attacking, you're going to be playing these levels over and over again to learn them inside out, more or less. So, you definitely have some replayability there, but... When it comes to just full on like go through it once and put it down and not pick it up again, Geometry Wars definitely does win that fight. But still, even with some of these levels being as hard as they are, it's going to take a lot of attempts to get through them all. I'm going to go play another level because apparently this one's kicking my ass. Actually, I'll go play another boss, shall I? We'll play Pal, why not? That'll be a good way to end it. There is, of course, the, um... Actually, you know what? I'll save, I'll save the surprise. We'll make, um... Shit. We'll make a... We'll make the first level on the expert difficulty. The final level in this video, because... It surprised me, and I wanted to surprise you too. You do need to actually beat the game on the expert mode to get all the trophies as well, which is, um... Well, appropriate. We'll put it that way. Thankfully, you only get a bronze for it, so if you feel the need to... Oh, God. If you feel the need to ignore that trophy, I don't blame you. Thankfully, I don't think this game has a platinum. Actually, does it have a platinum? Do I still have my trophies open? I don't. Hey, oh, oh, no, hang on. I can get to it real quick. Just as a reminder for myself, because I have a terrible memory recently. Nope, it's no... No platinum. So there we go. Do the game, please. I'm going full on bullet hell on this bloody boss. One more try, and then we'll go play our level on expert difficulty, and I'll show you what the difference is there. Because it's a pretty major one. Nope, ran straight into it. You'd think with my Darius Burst uh, skills, I'd be half decent at this sort of thing, but nope. Alright, let's put the difficulty up to Expert, which inverts all the colours. That actually kind of annoys me, but there is actually a way around this. Just turn on Invert Colours and everything's back to normal. <laughs> oh man, but anyway. We will start a new game right here. On Expert difficulty. So watch this. 
It's the same set of levels, right? No problem. Every enemy that gets destroyed throws out bullets. What a dick move. <laughs> Seriously? Like, you can earn massive scores off this, obviously, but... Jeez, if that doesn't make the, the whole balance of, like, trying to manage your bombs and your uh, bullets even harder, I don't know what does. Like, look at this! And I'm dead. <laughs> Surprising literally no one. But yeah. I'm definitely going to put the difficulty back down to normal. And my game crashed. <laughs> oh man. Okay, that's actually slightly annoying. But yeah. That was a look at Son of Scorgasm. Despite that, which honestly doesn't really make that much of a difference to me. Because, you know, the game saved constantly. I really do like it. It's a, it's a really well-designed twin-stick shooter, and the, the little flaws that it has, whether it be its slight performance issues or its um, relatively short length, it's still great. And if you're a fan of twin-stick shooters, or even just like a minorly enjoy twin-stick shooters, this is an easy recommend. Very easy. Also, little bit of a tiny note, like you're not going to be able to see it now, but um, if you were paying attention, if you were paying attention when the levels were being played, you could actually see the other levels in the background. The entire game is just one little galaxy, and that's just a nice touch. It really feels like someone's put a ton of effort into it, and that's... Yeah, th this game is entirely worth your time. So, there you go. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.